everyone, my name is Katie. I'm one of the clinical educators here at Contra Medical, and today I'm going to be giving an overview of the Cora Aeon Stool Management Kit. I'm going to start with an overview of the kit, and then go through the application process, the maintenance features, the fluid delivery process, and finish up with the removal of the device. Let's get started. Now, when you receive the kit, it's going to look just like this. On the back, as with any device, we do have a list of indications and contraindications. Before we get started, we are going to need to gather just a few items for the use of the product. We'll need gloves and lubricant, a Lure Lock syringe for fluid delivery, and a slip tip syringe for stool samples. Now I'm just going to set these aside as we go through the contents of the kit. When you're ready to open the kit, you're going to peel up the sticker on the front and break the seal. Now inside, we have just about everything we need. Again, we'll need to gather gloves, lubricant, a lure lock syringe, and a slip tip syringe. We do have a brief panel of instructions on the top, as well as a more detailed pamphlet of instructions underneath the device. We also have a bag hanger. This is going to loop around the bottom rung of the bed and snap into place. There's also a fluid delivery clamp. We like to place this right on the bag hanger for ease of access. We know small parts tend to lock off, so this way we know exactly where it is when we need it later on. Lastly is the device itself. It is preloaded in an applicator, and then we have about six feet of length with a collection bag at the very end. The initial collection bag is attached, and then others will be stocked separately. Let's set this aside as we go through the application process. For the application process, I've gathered just a few items. I have my model, a short length device for demonstration, some lubricant, and an empty applicator. I want to start with this to show you the proper handling of the device before we get started with the application. So I want to note that there are two different pieces of the applicator. We have the blue and the white. On the blue portion, you'll see some indentations. These are used as gripper marks. We want to hold the device in our right hand between our thumb and our index finger. The white and the blue pieces are going to slide apart from each other during the application process to pull apart and leave the device in place. So let's go through that. So we're going to go ahead and start with the patient in the left lateral position. We have the device between our thumb and our index finger in the right hand. We're gonna go ahead and lubricate the entire length of the applicator. So now we're going to insert all the way until the white tab is against the patient's tailbone. This white tab acts as a stopping feature. So it prevents us from over inserting, but also ensures that we're inserting far enough. From here, we're going to steady the white tab with our left thumb and pull back on the blue portion of the applicator. I do wanna note that we're just using our left thumb to steady the white tab. We aren't going to be pushing it in or adjusting it in any way. So as we steady that white tab, we'll pull back on the blue portion of the applicator. As we pull back, it may start to clamshell open. So you'll notice it coming apart and that's completely normal. That is the intention to get it to peel away from the sheath of the device. So just go ahead and pull all the way and peel it away. Now we still need to remove the white tab. So we're going to steady the sheath of the device in one hand as we pull out and away to remove the white tab. And that's it. Just remember there are two pieces of the applicator, both of which need to be removed and discarded. So the one thing we don't want to do with the Cora is give it a nice tug. I know it may be difficult because with the balloons, we're taught to insert, inflate, and then give it that nice tug to ensure proper placement. With the Cora, the applicator standardizes the entire application process, so there's no need for adjustment. If we want to gauge placement, we can take a look at the transition in color from clear to white on the sheath near the rectum. This transition tells us how far in the device is. If we see the transition as close to the rectum as possible, we know that the device is properly placed in the rectal folds. Let's take a closer look at that. So here on the model, we can see that our stent-like feature is placed in the rectal folds. This means that we're going higher up 
rather than being anchored on the anal rectal junction. This is going to give us a nice seal as the device moves naturally with peristalsis, substantially decreasing leakage. It's also much safer and much more comfortable for the patient by eliminating any contact with the nerve endings in the anal rectal junction. Let's set this aside and go through the maintenance features of the device. In the center of every device, you'll find what we call a maintenance hub. There are three different ports that we want to take a look at here. The first is a stool sample port. When we open this port, it may seem that it cannot be penetrated because it's a one-way valve. We're going to use a slip tip syringe to insert and aspirate as needed. Just be sure that this is closed completely afterwards. Although the entire device and collection bag are 100% odor containing, if this is left open, some gas may be emitted. We just want to ensure that it's closed all the way. Now there are two other ports that we want to take a look at. The first has a red sticker that says pull to withdraw. We'll be coming back to that one as it's for the removal of the device. The other has a blue sticker that says irrigate and it's a lure lock port. This is what we'll use for the routine irrigation and later fluid delivery. We need to irrigate the device about every four to eight hours with 30 to 60 cc's of saline. So we have our loaded lure lock syringe. We want to adhere the syringe without twisting the port itself. We want to ensure that the port is not twisted or kinked in any way, otherwise it may kink and prevent the flow of liquid. Once it's attached, administer irrigation. Then we're going to steady the sheath with one hand and milk the contents down towards the collection bag. The idea is just to keep everything patent and moving nicely. Now there's also a sticker in the middle of the maintenance hub. This just acts as a reminder for the routine maintenance that's needed for the Cora. We just want to remember to irrigate every four to eight hours with 30 to 60 cc's of saline, milk the contents down towards the collection bag, and then we'll need to check the collection bag. Now, each collection bag will be found on the bedside on the bag hanger that comes in the kit. When we're ready to exchange the bag as it's filled, we're going to remove the bag from the hanger, hold the top of the bag in one hand, and the sheath in another. We're just going to be twisting to disengage the sheath from the bag. It's about a quarter turn counterclockwise. There are pins on either side of the sheath that align with the divots in the bag. We're just aligning and twisting. Now in the bag is an anti-reflux valve, so stool cannot come back out once it's in. On the back, we have a gas release valve with a charcoal filter. So there's no need to burp the bag, it is self-sufficient, and the odor is contained while the gas is emitted. I also want to note that the indentation is just above that gas release valve. So it's just going to sit right on the bedside on that bag hanger, like so. Again, when the bag is full, I'm just going to cap it and place it in the disposal. Now let's get started with the fluid delivery process. When we need to administer any type of fluids rectally, we're going to take the fluid delivery clamp off of the bag hanger. Now the clamp itself is a memory foam material, so we'll be placing the clamp first as it does not occlude the inner tubing that's used for medication or fluids. It's only there to prevent backflow and allow your medication to dwell. So let's go through that. We want to first straighten out the sheath and make sure there are no kinks or twists and place the clamp as close to the patient as possible. The further down your clamp is, the further out your medication or enema will seep. Clamp first and then grab a lure lock syringe with your medication and administer through that same irrigation port. Again, even though the clamp is in place, we can still push the medication and now our hands are free and we can allow the medication to dwell as needed. When finished, go ahead and remove the clamp and place it right back on the bag hanger on the bedside. Then we may need to steady the device and milk the contents down towards the collection bag. The last process we have is the removal of the device. We're going to start by turning the patient back into the left lateral position we want to irrigate the device first and milk the contents down. Then 
we want to ensure that we're entirely ready to remove the device. Essentially, we're going to be pulling on the withdraw tab to collapse the device and remove it from the patient. We have no way of re-expanding the device or reinserting it. So we just wanna be sure that we're ready to remove the device. After we've turned the patient in the left lateral position and irrigated as needed, we're going to seek the withdraw tab in the maintenance hub. We're going to be holding the base of the tab in one hand and the top of the tab in another. As we start to pull, there is a white piece of plastic that emerges. This acts as a visual indication as to how collapsed the device is. As we pull, there is some tension involved in this process, but we're going to pull all the way until the white piece of plastic is completely straightened and parallel to the fibers below. Once those two items are completely parallel to each other, we know that the device is completely collapsed and we can remove it from the patient. We don't need to maintain tension, we can let that down and then go ahead and remove the device. One thing I do wanna know is that the Cora is a one-time use product and cannot be reinserted once it's removed. If it's accidentally removed while moving or transporting a patient, that's okay. It won't do harm to the patient as it's self-expanding and will conform to whatever anatomy it's placed in. But we just can't reinsert the same device. So go ahead and start with a new kit if that happens. Thank you for joining me today. If you have any questions or would like more information, you can visit our website, contramedical.com, where you'll find data, publications, and videos on the Cora Stool Management Kit. If you'd like to send us an email, you can send it to sales at contramedical.com, or if you'd prefer to speak to someone live, you can give us a call at 800-520-4714. Thank you.